Morning, everyone. So um, we see all this innovation. We see all these new features. But if we don't deliver those features with a high level of quality, they're not really much use to you. So I want to talk a bit about what we're doing, both to prevent those bugs from happening, and when they do happen, what we are going to do about fixing them. Because we want to be the highest quality engine that you can have, no matter what. But um, let's start uh, with a look on uh, code base, because it's a beast. We have about one and a half million lines of code, and it's pretty evenly split between the platforms, the editor, and the runtime. And on that code base, we have four and a half thousand commits to the main line every single month. And that's done with over 200 engineers. Now, if you know, developers producing code, they also produce bugs. So the trick here is to prevent them from getting out. And if they do get out, how do we fix them fast enough? And to do that, we have a series of uh, QA gates that each of these have to pass through. So on every one of these chains that goes in, they have to get through a uh, code review from the peers. So checking that standards are up to date, that they have the correct test uh, written, and, and making sure that it fits the architecture. But it also has to go through a build verification test. And that's just the start of the automation pass, with over 16,000 tests running on 14 devices. And if any of those fail, it's not getting in. So that's a simple start of it. Once it's in the code base, we have a lot of manual testing as well. We have over 60 QA engineers touching that code base once it's in. And they do a verification of all the bugs that are in. They do a smoke test on it. And then we have several p uh, test passes on both manual tests, scripted tests, and, uh, and exploratory destructive testing. So it goes through a lot of hands in order to try to prevent it. But on the automation side, we do more than that because we have a very large suite of automation that we are maintaining and developing all the time. So we have 4,500 unit tests just to cover the C++ in the beginning. And then we have uh, about 1,600 runtime tests. And these tests are run on all 22 platforms we have in our build form. They enable us to actually make all these platforms and make it consistent so you can press a button in the editor and, and it works. Um, we also have 1,500 integration tests. They communicate with the editor. We run them all, editor versions, Windows, Mac, 32, 64-bit. And uh, they ensure that our, the editor is running and functioning well. Then we have 400, about 400 graphics tests. We'll run them on all the 22 platforms as well. So that's a, like we have a reference image for each of all the, the platforms. We run the test. And if there is a difference, there's a bug. So every time that happens, someone has to investigate and see why did this happen. And then we have about 300 asset import tests. So we test that everything from the ecosystem, like Maya, when we import that into Unity, that, that works. And we do that on all the editor platforms as well. And finally, we have a suite of performance tests. So we can compare a given version to another version. We run this on, uh, on eight platforms. So if there is a regression in performance in one of these change sets, we consider that a bug as well. So with all this automation, we run at least 50,000 tests once a day, sometimes several times a day. And we do this on each of the versions that we are actively uh, supporting. So it's, it's over a half a million tests every day that's running. So, and that's fine. We do that internally. That, that's, that's good. But we do more with that because we share this, we share our test suites with the partners in the ecosystem. So Qualcomm, Intel, Sony, Arm, Oculus, many more, they take our test suites, they run them in their labs. So when they are making new chipset, a new driver, a device, operating systems, they run our automation in their labs to ensure that your games is not going to fail when they ship it. 
So we're empowering the entire ecosystem to make sure that Unity games are functioning at the best. So that's solving a very hard problem for all of you. Um, and that's good, all the automation that we have there. So uh, when we go out and we uh, ask you, what should we do, what should we uh, focus on, like Lucas said, you pretty much say this. You have chosen Unity because it solves your problems. So you don't want to have bugs while you're making your games with it. So you want bug fixes, you want all of them, and you want them now. Now, we do need some way to prioritize, and thus we ask you to, to help us with it. Because if you, con if you uh, get some symptom of a bug and you Google it, then you will most likely find the bug on the issue tracker unity3d.com. And if you do that, then please go in and vote for it, because we use it to prioritize which bugs are the most important for you guys. We have about, uh, we, we have about half of all the bugs, those that are not uh, having privacy concerns for you guys when you submit them, available out there in the public. So please go in and vote for it. So, we have prevented some bugs. We have the, the votes from you guys, which are, are important. So how do we fix them? Now, last year, we created a team called the Sustained Engineering Team. That team is made in order. Sustained Engineering is you sustain the engineering effort on a, a version that you have shipped. And we created that last year after hearing all this about uh, bugs from you guys. And we started out in, uh, in May, slowly, getting to know the pace and how to get this running. Um, and then over the year, we have increased the pace of uh, fixing those bugs. So at the highest point, we were up to having eight patches in one month with over 300 bugs fixed. And we ship those weekly. Now, these are bugs that are blocking you that's, that's the ones uh, we are prioritizing most, uh, most highly. And we are now down to being able to go from, from we had months where we could, before we could ship a fix for a bug. We're now down to sometimes being able to, sh to ship this bug fix in two days. And that's with all of the, the automation, everything, all the QA running on that. So we've optimized this entire chain. And uh, we want to do more with that. We're increasing the size of the team. We're increasing the, the, uh, the pace that we want to do, and we're increasing the versions that we're supporting. So during this year, we have been able to ship patches on five different versions, 4.3, 4.5, 4.6, 5.0, and 5.1. And we have shipped 73 patches and releases. Some of those are editor updates. You'll get them automatically. Some you will have to come and see. Uh, you'll, you'll get from our, uh, from our site. And through that, we've been able to ship over 1,500 fixes fast on a fast cycle. So that's something we want to do faster. We want to do it more. We want to have, uh, be able to unblock you even faster than we have already done uh, today. So we're hiring. If anyone knows good people, <laughs> uh, please send them my way. <laughs>